what I told you guys to do was first step when you're doing a table, all right, you set your value, set whatever's inside your absolute value equal to zero. X equals a zero. This one's pretty easy. It's not like that one. That's why I wanted to show you guys that one. I didn't want to do it, but I want to show you guys that one because that had numbers inside the absolute value. This one does not, right? So guess what? We're good. We know that the absolute va the axis of symmetry is at zero. So when I create my table, I'm going to have zero as my point, as my like kind of middle point. That's my vertex and axis of symmetry, or the x value of my vertex. Now, to find the point, you take x and you plug it in for x. Or you take the value, plug it in for x. Well, 0, absolute value 0 is 0. 0 times negative 1 third is 0. OK. Now, here kind of comes into a fun part. Some of you might say, well, Mr. McLogan, you showed us to do negative 1 and negative 2, right? Well, if you do negative 1 and negative 2, if you plug in negative 1, so now you can pick points to the left and to the right. I'll kind of give you guys a hint, though. Um, if you pick negative 1 and negative 2, which is perfectly fine, right? you pick points to the left and pick points to the right. But negative 1 and negative 2, if you plug in negative 1, absolute value negative 1 is 1. 1 times negative 1 third is negative 1 third. If you plug in negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. 2 times negative 1 third is a negative 2 thirds. Does anybody really like graphing fractions? No, but it's possible. If I start at 0, 0, which is my vertex, I go down to negative 1, I only go up negative 1 third. Go over negative 2, I now go up negative 2 thirds. Right? It's possible to graph fractions, but it's really not ideal. Okay? So what I would do, if you have a fraction, Pick points, because you can pick any point you want. Pick points that, are, that you can devise the that the denominator divides into. So 3, what are some points that 3 divides into? 3, 6, 9. So guess what? I would rather pick points like 3 and 6. I told you only to pick two, you only need to do two points. So why don't we pick 3 and 6? It's much easier. So let's do 3. If I plug in 3, absolute value of 3 is 3. 3 times negative 1 third is, oops, I'm sorry, fr oh, crap. You guys didn't even check me out on that. That's negative, right? It's negative 1 third and negative 2 thirds, right? Negative 1, negative 1 third, negative 2 thirds. So let's plug in 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1. 6, absolute value of 6 is? 6. 6 times negative 1 third is negative 2. So I go over negative 3, go down to 1. Go over negative 6, go down to 2. All right. So what I want you guys to understand is a couple points. First of all, remember there's an axis of symmetry here. So whatever's true on one side, you can just reflect that to the other side. So I could go over to negative 3 and go down negative 1. And I could go to 6 and go down there. These two points still work. But do you guys see how since my absolute value, my a, was less than 1, it horizontally stretched the graph? Right? Does that make sense? Whenever you guys have a fraction, I like to choose values that your denominator is divisible into, rather than choosing just always negative 1, negative 2. Yes, those are nice, but they give you fractions, which you can do. These fractions, when I graph them, they're still on the graph. It's just more difficult. It can be more confusing. Anybody have any questions? Yes? How did you get negative 